Today, the university confers an honorary Doctor of Humane Letters on Mr. Evan Wolfson. Mr. Wolfson, would you please join me at the podium? Trustee Lee and Provost Heldobler, would you also come forward? I'm putting you right here. There you go. Okay. Considered by many to be the leader of the same-sex marriage movement, Evan Wolfson is the founder and president of Freedom to Marry, a group that supports marriage equality in the United States. The historic Supreme Court decision on June 26, 2015, that ruled same-sex couples could marry nationwide has been largely attributed to his work on developing a state-by-state -state strategy for marriage equality. Born in Brooklyn and raised in Pittsburgh, Mr. Wolfson graduated from Yale College in 1978 and Harvard Law School in 1983. He taught political philosophy and law at notable universities and published nu numerous articles on sexual orientation and civil rights, beginning with his 1983 law school thesis on the freedom to marry for same-sex couples. From 1989 until 2001, Mr. Wolfson led the ongoing national marriage equality movement for equal marriage protections through the National Freedom to Marry Coalition that he created while working at Lambda uh, Lambda Legal Defense and Education Fund. Among many notable cases, he was co-counsel in Hawaii's landmark Bear case for the freedom to marry, which launched the current global marriage equality movement in Canada, Argentina, the United Kingdom, New Zealand, and Australia. Mr. Wolfson has been named on top 100 lists for most influential attorneys in America by the National Law Journal and most influential people in the world by Time Magazine. In 2012, he was awarded the Barnard Medal of Distinction, the college's highest honor, alongside President Barack Obama. Mr. Wolfson currently lives in New York City, where he continues to serve as president of Freedom to Marry. As an institution whose mission is to prepare a diverse community of students for leadership and service, in our region and in a dynamic multicultural world, Northeastern Illinois University is proud to honor such an extraordinary individual and to invite him to become a part of the legacy of our university. Evan Wolfson exemplifies well the university values of Northeastern Illinois. Those values are integrity, excellence, access to opportunity, diversity, community, and empowerment through learning. And he serves as a role model to inspire our students as they find their way in our complex world. Therefore, Evan Wolfson, in public recognition of merit and distinction, and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Northeastern Illinois University, I hereby confer upon you the degree Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. Congratulations. And now Dr. Wolfson will deliver the commencement address to the graduates. President Haas, members of the Board of Trustees, faculty, the entire Northeastern Illinois University family, thank you for including me in today's inspiring ceremony. Even as recently as five years ago, let alone in the years in which you all were born, the idea that a gay activist campaigning for the freedom to marry would be chosen by a state school in Illinois as its commencement speaker would have seemed inconceivable to most people. Within living memory, gay people in America were a despised and oppressed minority discriminated against under the law, stigmatized by prejudice and stereotypes, 
marginal to those in power, forced into hiding, paying the consequences of exclusion, indignity, and disdain. Non-gay people were taught that gay people were alien others, bearing the classic tropes of dehumanization, a menace to children, animalistic in behavior, immoral, ill, subversive. In waves of fear and political exploitation, gay people were alternately and inconsistently labeled somehow as both pathetically weak and dangerously predatory, a threat to the family, to society, and to America. But the story of America, our country, is that despite its flaws and imperfections, its, its falling short of its promise, we the people can form a more perfect union. We can speak out and organize and work. We can help our sisters and brothers, our fellow citizens, rise to the better angels of their nature. We can create and claim power, come together, and achieve democratic change. And so, through struggle and sacrifice and stumbles, through many noisy battles and millions of quiet conversations, through a winning combination of the Constitution's human rights guarantees, a decades-long movement, a successful strategy, and a tenacious campaign, determined Americans gay and non-gay together, took the very thing that defined how gay people were discriminated against, our love, and by claiming the preeminent language of love, marriage, changed hearts and minds and then the law and won the freedom to marry nationwide. That transformation of law, this triumph of love, too, not so long ago, seemed inconceivable to most people. And of course, there was no marriage without engagement. It took us believing and reaching out, engaging non-gay people in conversation. It took trust that we could connect and that others would move. It took a movement, a strategy, a campaign, all three. It took hope and perseverance. It took work and time and faith to get our country where it needed to be. And our work is still not over. Now we harness the power of the marriage conversation to the work that still remains in ending discrimination and securing good lives for gay and transgender people across the United States and around the world. Now, some of you may be wondering, what does this have to do with you and today's celebration of your hard work, your achievements, your future? Well, you, the class of 2016, are about to graduate, about to receive degrees from a school ranked the most ethic, ethnically diverse regional public university in the Midwest. <laughs> Northeastern Illinois University proudly proclaims as its mission, quote, we prepare a diverse community of students for leadership and service in our region and in a, in a dynamic, multicultural world. They're talking about you. Northeastern declares more than 100 countries are represented in our student body. Nearly 50 languages other than English are spoken as a first language by our students. That's beautiful. When I hear that, when I look out at beautiful you today, I see our country. I see our country's hope for the future. Now, I'm from New York City, the most diverse city 
in the most diverse country on earth. I'm a New Yorker, I'm Jewish, and I'm gay, so naturally I love Broadway. <laughs> the hottest show on Broadway right now, the coolest soundtrack playing nationwide, is Lin-Manuel Miranda's Grammy and Pulitzer Prize winning musical, Hamilton. In Hamilton, a multiracial cast riffs on our nation's founding through multicultural music, the story of America then told by America now. Immigrants, we get the job done, the musical sings, and it begins the story of the immigrant Alexander Hamilton's life with a question, and please forgive my rapping. How does a bastard orphan, son of a whore and a Scotsman, dropped in the middle of a forgotten spot in the Caribbean by providence, impoverished in squalor, grow up to be a hero and a scholar, the $10 founding father without a father, got a lot farther by working a lot harder, by being a lot smarter, by being a self-starter? That was the hard part. Get your education, Hamilton is told. Don't forget from whence you came, and the world's going to know your name. The show celebrates America's history of immigration, of inventiveness, of self-improvement, of meritocratic rise, of e pluribus unum. And it also invokes America's history of nasty political combat, of discrimination and division, of suspicion and sexism, of racism and repression, of imperfection. But with all that imperfection, the United States belongs to all of us, immigrant and indigenous, regardless of race, sex, sexual orientation, or gender identity, America is us. America is us, and it is we, the people, who have to, as another song from Hamilton puts it, work. Enable us to guard for the least among us the freedom we covet for ourselves. Make us ill content with the inequalities of opportunity which still prevail among us. Preserve our union against all the divisions of race and class which threaten it the greatest president of the 20th century, Franklin Roosevelt, exhorted yet another generation at yet another national moment of doubt, difficulties, and destiny. FDR instructed Americans of his generation that, quote, we must scrupulously guard the civil rights and civil liberties of all citizens, whatever their background. We must remember that any oppression any injustice, any hatred, is a wedge designed to attack our civilization. The promise of our Constitution, of our country, is something that we Americans of every generation in every century have always had to work for. Now, true to life, the musical Hamilton also portrays how even the most accomplished people, indeed all human beings, are flawed. Even the greatest are sometimes undone by their flaws. And we see in the show and in our own lives how important it is to have not just one's work, one's achievement, but family, friends, and love. Hamilton's life story, much like a commencement ceremony, celebrates both independence and interdependence. The poet chosen to speak at President Obama's second inauguration, Richard Blanco proclaimed, quote, every story begins inside a story that's already begun by others. Blanco was the youngest person to be named the US inaugural poet, the first immigrant, the first Latino, the first openly gay person. 
He later composed a special poem in honor of Freedom to Marry, the campaign I led, marking the 10th anniversary of gay people finally being able to marry in the United States. The person chosen to give the keynote speech at the Democratic Convention at which President Obama was nominated for a second term was San Antonio Mayor Julian Castro. Mayor Castro declared, quote, the American dream is not a sprint or even a marathon, but a relay. Our families don't always cross the finish line in the span of one generation, but each generation passes on to the next the fruits of their labor. Mayor Castro served as a chair of our Mayors for the Freedom to Marry public education campaign. On both these historic, solemn, political occasions, both of these speakers took the time to remind those listening that each of us is part of something bigger. All of us owe a debt to others, our fellow citizens, our friends, our family. So today it is fitting that as we celebrate you and your hard work and your talent and achievement, you in turn join in celebrating and thanking those in your life who sacrificed and supported you so you could ascend and achieve. Please take this moment now to thank, with your hugs and applause, your parents, your life partners, your siblings, your family members, your mentors, your teachers, your classmates, your university, your community, all of whom are part of who you are, your dreams, and what you've accomplished. Now, I don't have to tell you here today that gay and transgender people are not the only people in America to have faced discrimination, to endure prejudice, to be labeled as a menace, to be treated as lesser or other. I don't have to tell you that there are a lot of things still wrong in our country, a lot of ugly rhetoric, dysfunctional politics, and injustice, a lot of work left to be done. I don't have to tell you that we need to come together, not build walls. We need teamwork. We need teamwork and talent, not division. We need investment, not selfishness. I don't have to tell you that immigrants built this country. <laughs> that Black Lives Matter. That women should be in charge of their own bodies and lives and should lead. That everyone should pay their fair share and be able to vote. That each person should be free to pursue happiness. That we should all be judged not by our external attributes but by the content of our character. The challenges are many, and right now there is nothing America needs more than a diverse community of students prepared for leadership and service in a dynamic, multicultural world. Happily, happily, there's no challenge we face now in America that cannot be met and overcome by a diverse community of students prepared for leadership and service in a dynamic, multicultural world. <laughs> Northeastern graduates, your own journeys, your families, your hard work, and this school have prepared you for what George Bernard Shaw called, quote, the true joy of life, the being used up for a purpose recognized by yourself as a mighty one, being a force of nature instead of a feverish, selfish little clot of ailments and grievances complaining that the world will not devote itself to making you happy. I am of the opinion, Shaw said, 
that my life belongs to the community, and as long as I live, it is my privilege to do for it what I can. In the musical Hamilton, Alexander Hamilton sings, I'm just like my country, I'm young, scrappy, and hungry, and I'm not throwing away my shot. Northeastern Illinois University class of 2016, you've worked hard and you're about to graduate. It's about time, we need you, the country needs you, the world, America, a future of challenge and hope. All are waiting for your engagement, your service, your leadership. Take your shot, you've earned it. Congratulations. I think when we look back on those who truly made marriage equality a reality and fought for civil rights for the LGBT community, Dr. Evan Wolfson's name will be among those at the top of the list. Audience, please join me in giving Dr. Wolfson one more round of applause.